Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn off warning messages. Those warning messages that you get when you run action queries in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Jim. Jim asks, I'm running an update query from a button on a form, and every time I do, I get this annoying warning message that says I'm about to update X rows. Is there any way to turn this off? Well, yes, Jim, definitely, of course, there is. There's a way to do it. pretty much everything in Microsoft Access. So here's a scenario. Here's a simple database, customers, contacts, and I've got an order table. Okay, orders come in, they're assigned a customer ID, an order date, and I've got a has shipped box. Now the way my team works is all the orders get shipped for the day, and then at the end of the day, I just want to click a button and mark them all shipped. I don't want to have to go down the line, automatically do that, and I want it to be something simple from my main menu. I just want to click a button here and mark all the orders shipped. I don't want to have to have my secretary digging around in menus and all that. Put a button right there. It's easy to do. First, let's throw together our update query. Create, query design, bring in the order table. That's the table we're changing. I'm going to turn this add tables box off. Change it to an update query. Now bring in the field you want to change. Has shipped and set update to true. That means we're going to update the has shipped field to true. Mark all the orders in the system is shipped at the end of the day. Save this, control S, as mark orders shipped Q. I like to end all my queries in the letter Q. If you've never done an update query before, if you have no idea what these are, I have separate videos on making update queries and explaining them in more detail. I'll put links below the video. In a nutshell, an update query, instead of viewing data a certain way, will change data for you. In this case, I'm changing all of the has shipped fields to true in the order table. All right, close this. Now, again, I don't want my secretary to have to bounce through my navigation pane here and find stuff. I want to put something right on my main menu that he or she has access to. Real easy to drop a command button. Design view, open this up. Again, command button up here. Drop it down below. We're going to go to miscellaneous, run query, next. Pick the query, we only have one right now. Next, I like text, mark orders shipped. Next, give the button a meaningful name, mark orders shipped. You don't have to do that, although Alex will yell at you. If you don't know who Alex is, spend some time on my website, you'll find out, and then finish. All right, move the button in place, make it nice and pretty, make your form bigger. Okay, so now I got a button that when I click on it is gonna run that query. And again, if you've never made a command button, if you don't know what the command button wizard is, I covered this in my classes, I'll put some links below. The purpose of this tech help video is to show you what happens next. Now we've got the setup done. Now let's open up our main menu. I'm gonna go and click on my button. Are you ready? Click. Here's the warning message. You are about to run an update query that will modify data in your table. Are you sure you wanna do this? Yeah. Another one, you're about to update nine rows. Are you sure you wanna do this? Yeah. And now it's done. And what did it do? If I open up my order table, you can see it marked them all as shipped. All right, it did what it was supposed to do, but I don't wanna see those two warning pop-ups. I just wanna click on this button and have it do it, okay? All right, here's what you have to do. Go to File, come down to Options. On the Options menu, go to Client Settings, Come down a bit here to where it says confirm, turn off action queries. Action queries are things like update queries, delete queries, append queries, make table queries, all those things that do action on your data. They do stuff, they don't just show you stuff. All right, I've got lessons on action queries. All right, let's hit okay. You must close and reopen the current database. Yeah, sometimes you don't have to, it just tells you that. Let's see if it works. Click, and now it did it and it didn't show you any warning messages. See, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. That's just to cover my butt warning message that Microsoft puts up there so that you don't have to. All right, I'm gonna turn all of these back off again. And you can make a query to do it in the reverse too, but all right, so now I marked them all as not shipped. All right, come in here, end of the day, all right, click, done. Open up your order table and they're marked shipped again. Okay, it's, it's that simple to turn off the warning messages. Now. There's a better way to do this, but it involves programming, some code, or at least building a macro at the minimum. 
This only works for your copy of the database. So if you've got multiple users on a network, for example, you're going to have to go around to all their different workstations and turn off those warning messages on each user's machine. So if you're planning on distributing this database, you're going to have to tell them too to go in and change it. Plus, you might not want those error messages off all the time. If you've got sensitive stuff in there, you got like a delete query, for example, you might want to ask the user once in a while, are you sure? You sure you want to do this? So in the members only extended cut version of this video, I will show you how to do this in VBA code. It's not that hard, a couple lines of code. I'll show you how to turn off the warning messages only when you want to in your code. And it will work for the database as a whole. So if you've got a multi-user setup or if you're giving this database to other people to use, then the code will of course work for them as well. You don't have to set the change the setting in each database. Okay, I just finished recording the extended cut for members. I showed them how to do everything we just did without making a query and without using the command button wizard. So we dropped our own command button on the form and then I showed in VBA how to run an SQL statement, how to turn warnings with the set warnings command on and off, which that will work for everybody using the database. Now you can distribute it, you can put it on your network and it will control just what happens for that particular case. You don't have to turn the entire system warnings on and off. I showed them how to create a message box to ask the user, are you sure? And then to show them when it's done. Then we added a ship date field. And whenever you mark the orders shipped, it will take anybody who doesn't have a ship date and update their ship date. So if I got some new orders that come in, let's say for customer two, right? And he puts them in today. That's control semicolon, by the way, same as Excel. Okay, if you wanna put the current date in there. See, I'm still teaching you. Okay, now when I run that query, the button on the menu, I don't want to change the ship date for all the existing records, right? So the time now is currently 1245. So if I go out here, I hit mark order ship. It says, are you sure? That's my own custom prompt. If I say yes, no, or cancel, it doesn't do anything. But if I say yes, it runs the query and then says done, and if I check my table, there we go, you can see 1245, and all these guys are left alone. So that's all covered in the members only extended cut video. How do you become a member? Well, you click on that join button under my videos on YouTube, or if you're watching this on my website, there's a link down below the video that says become a member. Silver members and up, get access to my extended cut tech help. You get access to live video and chat sessions, and there's lots of other perks. If you click on the join button, there you'll see a list of all the different membership options. There's silver, gold, platinum, and so on. Or even if you just want to become a supporter, it's 99 cents a month, and just it tells me that you're you're there and that you uh, you appreciate my videos. I've got a couple of those, and I appreciate you. But don't worry, my tech help videos will still be free for the future. I have no plans to stop making the free tech help videos. If you like my videos, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. That way you'll get notifications whenever I release a new video. You can also head over to my website and check out my access forum. If you have not yet tried my free access level one course, there's the link. Stop by. It's a three hour full tutorial on all the basics of Microsoft Access. And if you like level one, you can buy level two, which is another whole hour class for just one dollar. And that is free for my YouTube members, by the way. Don't even have to pay that dollar. If you've got questions you'd like to see answered, there's my tech help page, drop them there. You can also email me, but I prefer you use the tech help page because email isn't perfect and I get so much email, sometimes I don't go through it all. Tech help goes to a special box. There's all my other cool stuff. I'll put links below. Facebook, Twitter, my blog. Stop by and take my survey. Let me know what you thought of today's video or post your comments below. And thanks once again. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.